I've been playing Fire Emblem Engage because you have no time to game. Welcome to the next When the Credits Roll video, a series in which I only create a review once I have seen the credits roll to give you a little bit of faith in what you're hearing. For over three decades, Fire Emblem has arguably the reigning champ in the tactics genre, while others have faded into obscurity. Fire Emblem has endured the test of time, staying true to its roots while constantly innovating. Fire Emblem Engage is no exception. It honours its predecessors while blazing a new path with some interesting twists to its formula. But is the Fire Emblem Engage so engaging that you won't want to put it down? Or will your interest disengage as soon as you start playing? Fire Emblem Engage was released on Jan 20th, 2023, developed by Intelligent Systems and published by Nintendo for the Nintendo Switch. It took me roughly 48 hours to complete. Fire Emblem Engage is set in the world of Elios, a land that has enjoyed peace for almost a millennium after a destructive war with the Fell Dragon that was sealed away by the Divine Dragon Lumera. You play as the Divine Dragon's and child of Lumera, a legendary hero from the Old War who was sleeping for a thousand years due to injuries sustained while fighting the Fell Dragon. However, their slumber is interrupted as soon as the Fell Dragon awakens and a new war begins. Unfortunately, the Divine Dragon has lost their memory, but is given no chance for reprieve or time to recover said memories, as they are thrown right into the fray once more. As a Divine Dragon, you must awaken 12 ancient spirits called the Emblems, which are heroes from previous Fire Emblem titles. These Emblems are crucial in defeating the Fell Dragon, and your task is to collect and awaken them from various nations to save the world. The plot of the game is a satisfying mid-tier fantasy story that delivers pot twists, interesting moments, and despite not having the political intrigue of earlier titles, does not shy away from character deaths and conflict. One thing Fire Emblems are known for is the large cast of characters who are mocked out to different degrees in different games. Sometimes you find out very little about them and others far too much. And I think the balance in this game is okay, but when thinking of how to describe this cast, I kept coming back to one word. Creeps. I feel really sorry for the Divine Dragon in particular, as they receive an unwarranted amount of attention from their companions, as they have a seriously twisted hero worship problem. The poor guy, every time he rests or goes to sleep, someone appears or is just staring at him while he is sleeping. And his reaction can be pretty funny, as he is obviously uncomfortable about it, but is also such a polite person that he's not very good at expressing that. To beyond creeping on the Divine Dragon, they're just a really odd bunch. So that's a look at the plot, but how does it play? Well, first I'm going to talk about what you get up to out of the battle. And this revolves around the Divine Dragon's personal floating landmass and mansion called the Somnial, a land that is wrapped with the power of the Divine Dragon, so no one can enter without their permission, making it a safe haven for the team to relax and recover. The Somnial, the Somnial acts as a base with all the usual things you'd expect, such as mini games, the shops, buddies, hanging around. In Engage, you get four shops, the first two being your classic item and weapon shop, the third being a clothing shop for those who want to dress up all their cast, and the last and possibly most important is the blacksmith, where you can use specific items to upgrade your weapons. Little advice here, knife for Yanaka and anything with the prefix killer are worth upgrading. The blacksmith can also engrave a weapon with emblem symbol uh, that will get yet another boost on, on top based on the emblem put onto it. Most of the shops use gold, something in the game without serious grinding and possibly using a specific character in a special way is limited, but blacksmithing also use ingots of various levels, which are also very limited. There's also a fifth shop that opens up, but I won't spoil everything. After actual battles, you collect animals, um, which go into your farm. You can have up to five pets at one time, and they have this special abilities 
to provide you with items every time you return to the Somnial. Dogs are a popular and my recommended choice as they provide the ingots for the blacksmithing, which I just mentioned. Uh, well, donkeys are also a good to have because they uh, give special rare vegetables, which is used with a special pet that roams around the Somnial. This special pet is Sommy, a weird spirit cat thing that lives on the Somnial and follows you around, and by petting and feeding it, you gain bond fragments, something that's used in another area. You've got a few different mini-games, the first being very strength training, like doing push-ups, um, and they're basically button mashing games that give you a small reward in the next battle, as in like a buff to use certain stats and things. Wyvern Racing, which is this cool little like Panzer Dragoon style game, and of course, fishing as a mini-game, because no, RPG is complete without a fishing mini game. The other small thing you can do is just casually run around talking to everyone. This can be important as like previous Fire Emblems, this game has a support system. Basically characters can build relationships with each other and as these progress, and the Divine Dragon can progress these by talking to people once they've hit a specific level of friendship with them. This can be raised by battling alongside each other or giving them gifts, which is one of the talk options. The relationship between the non-Divine Dragon characters, so anyone that isn't the Divine Dragon, can also develop. Uh, this is again by battling with each other, and another method I'll describe in a bit. The, this all results in these support conversations, and they're mostly just like fun little conversations that give you a bit of insight into the character, or characters. Okay, the most important thing about these support conversations though are when an emblem is involved as without progressing your friendship to the next tier level with an emblem you don't get to carry on leveling up your friendship with said emblem and that is important for skills to help with the support there's an option in the cafe area to feed a couple of your characters fancy food you also get to take the leftovers into battle as an extra healing item and one character gets a special buff for eating those particular meals. The next one, and possibly one of the most important areas in the Somnial, is the arena. The arena gives you two options. The first being a three times usable option after every battle, where you select one of your dudes and they fight a randomly selected character that grows their bond with that character and also gives them vital XP. This can be really useful for growing weaker characters faster. Cough. Anna, <coughs> cough. The second is you select a character to fight it, an emblem, raising their level with them. So this costs bond fragments, something you get after battles, and as I previously said, Somi gives you some as well. And this raises your friendship bond level with that up to level 20 after hitting specific after doing specific things in game to allow it to get to level 20. With the, emblem, with the emblem unlocking skills that you can use after five levels, and then every level giving you skills. The bond with the emblem is important because every level of friendship with them gives you skills, but you don't unlock being able to use the skills until you've hit at least level five with that emblem. And it also automatically does the bond conversation for you, which you could forget if you were just doing it through normal battling. And you wouldn't be able to progress further without doing that bond conversation. So yeah, it's really useful to do it, the friendship management with emblems in this, in the arena. Now, why is this important? Well, leveling up just through battles is quite slow especially building your friendships with emblems. The, you have to have the emblem ring equipped to actually build friendship with them. So this gives you a chance for people that's not wearing that particular ring to build a friendship with said emblem. And this does it very quickly because you can literally do it in like a couple of minutes to be fully maxed out with a character. And like I said, once you get to at least level five with the emblem, you can start to learn their skills which range from stat buffs to weapon proficiencies. So yeah, building your relationship quickly with lots of emblems is very important to your specific character's builds, 
how you want to make them. Now that you've built your relationship and earned the skills from the emblems, there is a small issue. Unless you have the ring equipped, you don't actually have the skills. You just have the potential for the skills. So this leads us to the ring room, where you can spend SP, a resource you gain by using the character in battle, to buy skills permanently for the character from the emblems of which they have friendship levels with, of at least level five. There's only a couple of slots, so it's and SP is very limited. Choose wisely. Think about how you want to build your character. The ring room also has a couple of extra features. Firstly, you can polish the rings with whoever doing that gains some extra relationship points with the emblem, but with the arena, you don't really need to do it that much. Unless you want to hear the random little comments they make. You can also use bond fragments to create minor rings in a kind of gacha mechanic. This Now, this is both useful and pointless. I say it's useful because at the start of the game, when you don't have many emblem rings, and without having an emblem ring equipped, you won't gain SP. So you equip them with these dodgy knockoff rings, basically to, to make sure your characters are gaining SP and they get at least a small stat buff from it. But once you've got all your emblem rings, there's literally no reason to equip anyone with anything but an actual emblem ring. Because the stat buff is better, they come with skills, and uh, yeah, there's just no reason to not. Now, right next to the door to the ring room is an interesting little board. It gives two features. One is a reward structure for little achievements, with the reward being an amount of bond fragments. These achievements are a little lacklustre, as they're just simply things like deploy character X number of times, dodge this many times. But hey, every resource is limited outside of mega grinding, so it helps. The other thing it does, though, is allow donating to the lands. And this costs gold, which again is limited without mega grinding. But each level you gain means the rewards that you get at the end of the battle while in that land, like in that country, is greater and you get rarer items. It also makes the occurrence of gold and silver enemies in skirmishes more common. More on this in a little bit. You're near the end of the Somnial now, with only a couple of features left. Next up is the bedroom. Its, it's first main feature is that it allows your character to sleep and then experience just how creepy everyone is. It also moves time forward in the Somnial, with some features being time sensitive. The next feature is you can change the difficulty. Now, difficulty in Fire Emblem is an interesting beast. It comes in three flavours, normal, hard, and maddening. They all provide different features, so choose wisely. Also, you can only make the game easier and not harder. So, if you're not sure, start the highest level and work your way down. The game also has a second choice around difficulty. This is casual versus classic. Classic meaning that if a character dies in battle, they stay dead. And in casual, you just get them back after the battle. So there's a lot of potential to play the game how you want, make it as difficult as you want, which is nice. The last feature in the Somnial is the Tower of Trials. And if I'm honest, I didn't really use it. As it has some multiplayer features such as relay battles, there's another array of gaining small extra rewards and XP for all your dudes. But you don't really need to do it unless you're really into the game and just want more and more battles. Oh wait, I almost forgot, there's also fortune telling and amiibo stuff. Which honestly, I just didn't do. And I don't own any amiibo, amiibos. Battles themselves come in a few different flavours. Firstly, there's normal story missions that progress the overall story and campaign. So as you progress as well, through these, you unlock Paralogs, which are side story missions that come with the benefit of either getting an extra character or expanding the limit on how far you can bond with an emblem from 10 to level 20. So you want to do all the Paralogs to get make sure you get all the characters and are able to level up your character's friendship with an emblem ring to the max. Then you have Skirmishes. These randomly pop up around the world map and are battles against Corrupted that are a similar level to you. So there's always a challenge that's at your level because story missions don't really level up. 
These can be important as they contain the aforementioned gold and silver corrupted that on defeating give you more money. And as I previously mentioned, a higher level of donation for each country gives more chance of these gold and silver corrupted appearing in battle. You also have the randomly appearing training mounts that are very similar to skirmishes and offer gold as a reward for winning. Your soldiers, as usual, are a conglomeration of stats. With each, at the press of a button in the menus, show you an in-depth description on what it affects, which is really nice. It's a really nice UI element that lets you understand everything that's going on. But as usual, they're... what sets engage part first is the skill system. Each character will have a personal skill, a class skill, emblem skills, and two adjustable skills they've inherited from emblems mentioned previously. Each character also has their own personal inventory, where they can take a selection of items, whether that be weapons or consumables like health items. But don't worry about filling them up, as if you come across any chests and such like that, you don't lose the item, it just gets sent to the overall army in infantry called the convoy. Now, the class system has been one of the more fun, fun elements of a Fire Emblem game, and Engage follows suit. Each character has a class, which are divided into base and advanced, and there's even special ones as well. Base classes can be upgraded into advanced classes after hitting level 10, and using a Master Seal, an item you can either buy in the shop or collect from battles. The available classes to evolve into depend on your weapon proficiencies, of which each character has a specialty, their class gives you some, and you can inherit more proficiencies from being buddies with various emblems, who at certain levels give specific weapon proficiencies. But the fun fact about this is they don't need to be equipped, so these skills are just worth unlocking through the friendship system, because once unlocked, you have them. You don't need to actually specially equip them and use one of your two special changeable class slots class skill slots so yeah you've got your class to base 10 to level and now you have the chance to advance a class or max it out to level 20 first and in older games it was usually recommended to wait till you get to level 20 before upgrading but honestly in engage upgrade asap once in an advanced class you start again from level one keeping all your stats and get any modifiers for changing into the advanced class and once again, this maxes out at level 20. Now, in many older games, this meant you'd max your level out. Um, but not this. <laughs> so in this game, you get another seal called the second seal, which has two abilities. One to change to a completely different class, or it resets your current class back to level one without losing, losing any of the stats that you've already gained from leveling up so you can just keep going. Hence why changing into advanced class as soon as possible is recommended, because you're not going to miss out on those 10 levels that you would have in previous titles. You can just keep going. There's also a large variety of classes to play with, um, so it offers a multitude of different ways to build your characters, so it can be very fun to play around and see what you can create. One last note on classes, I briefly mentioned special classes. These are technically base classes, but they have no direct advancement. So instead, they can get to level 40 before needing to use a second seal. And well, in my opinion, Thief Special Class is absolutely brilliant. The knives they carry, along with their dodge skills, are absolutely mental. And Yunaka, one of the first thieves you get, stayed in this class the entire way through the game. By the end, for me, she was basically untouchable. But anyway, on to the battle. These play out pretty much like any Fire Emblem before, and many tactics titles. Well, that makes sense since Fire Emblem pretty much is uh, the origin of tactics as we know it. Engage doesn't deviate much from the standard templates. It's an I go, you go game, in that you move all your dudes, and then, in it, then the enemy goes. It's on a large square grid, but you move your character around based on their movement value with cavalry and flying units having expanded it movement areas and flying units not being affected by various terrains and can just fly over things. Beyond moving, you have the normal attack item and weight. Attack is interesting in Fire Emblem as it's based on the weapon you've got equipped, whether that be a spear, sword, each, each are different. And in Engage, you actually get to select which one you want to use 
um, some older fire emblems, you kind of just used whatever you had equipped automatically. Whereas this gives you the choice before you're doing your attack. Uh, magic is also in this menu as well. Uh, once you've selected your weapon for attacking, it equips it automatically, which is quite important for the enemy turn. You then select your target, whatever's in range of whatever weapon you're using, and the battle plays out on a separate screen where you get to see the two fight. And what makes Fire Emblem different from some of the others is that you attack and your enemy attacks at the same time. It's not like a you just attack on your turn and they attack on theirs. When you initiate an attack, both parties have a bit of a kick up. And it all depends on, like, the the order can depend on, like, speed and items you got equipped to stuff. So even though you've selected to attack, you might not hit them first, they might hit you first. Or you might hit them twice before they get to do retaliation and all sorts of things. Like, it, it's, it's not a simple, you just hit, as in, like, a lot of other games of this style. So, yeah, so you have, like, so some some examples of the things that can affect the turn over are like heavy weapons. They being slower always go last. Um, some skills that you might have equipped uh, that you hit potentially two times up front. So it's all of a strategy about choosing the right weapon for the job. Just an extra note, magic, as I said, is in the same menu because it's based on tomes. Different tomes have different spells. Hence it all being wrapped up in that option. They're kind of like, as opposed to having like a, a spell menu, it's an item that you equip that has a particular spell. Um, going to item. <laughs> item is what you'd expect, allowing you to change your equipped weapons or using consumables. And if you're the Divine Dragon, or next to the Divine Dragon, you can access the convoy, pulling items out of the universal storage. But item works pretty much how you'd expect. Wait is another option, and it just ends the character's turn, making them wait. There is an extra option that appears if you have a specific item called staves. This is what healers use. Uh, most of them are kind of, mo most staves are healing based, but there are a few that offer strange effects such as buffs, debuffs, and all that sort of thing. So make sure to carry a selection when you've got a stave wielder. The last option that appears is when you have an emblem ring equipped, and that is Engage. This merges you with the emblem ring that you've got equipped and merging you with that emblem, granting extra buffs, skills, new weapons to use, all depending on the emblem. So, like Sigurd gives you extra movement and has lances. Marth hits like a truck. Use the use of the emblems and their powerful abilities is key to winning the game. And it's actually been really well balanced around this mechanic, which was a concern going in. Fire Emblem Engage also brings back a staple of Fire Emblem, being the weapon triangle system, where one weapon beats another in like a rock, paper, scissors mechanic. But the nice addition to this is the break mechanic that goes on top of that, especially when it's coupled with emblem rings that give you different weapons to use. So... This, the emblem rings can make your characters very flexible because suddenly they have a spear and an axe meaning if they're going up against the various enemies that are weak to those things they've got those choices this mechanic basically means when you use the effective weapon it stops the enemy from hitting you back as long as you hit them first in the turn order and it also then breaks them for a round a broken enemy can then be hit by another character without repercussions so it's a good way of dealing with hard-hitting opponents. But beware, they can also do the same to you. Hence, when you select a weapon to do the attack, it's very important to be aware of all the other enemies around you because you may have used a sword and suddenly someone else nearby has a, like an enemy has a, a weapon that can break you because you used that sword. Uh, the maps and terrain themselves play a vital part in what makes the game good. Having more than just, like an open field with us versus the enemy. There's lots of varied designs with lots of terrain, blocking items, things that make you seem like you're inside castles, fields, bridges, choke points, all that sort of stuff. There's also effects such as miasma, fire and ice, which do damage or offer negative buffs or debuffs. Or in the case of ice, just creates a new wall that you can't pass through. 
but with some of them such as the yeah, miasma you can actually use other abilities that create fire and ice tiles to new to them that all adds tactical depth to the game and not just being fighting over an empty field there are also some maps that take place in the dark which offers an odd mix of tactics as it can make pushing forward a little nerve-wracking not knowing what's hiding in the darkness the battles of fire Emblem, the battles are fire emblem to the very core offering exactly what you expect from this type of game with a decent level of challenge and some fun maps that keep you on your toes and engage more than a couple of the previous titles feels more about combat than all the other stuff so if you're a fan of three houses massive amount of social elements this may be a bit of a disappointment but as someone who prefers the actual battle side i find this to my liking so what did i actually like about the game well as i mentioned previously i feel they nailed down the combat and engage it was truly an enjoyable experience on the battlefield and the downtime between battles has been greatly reduced from three houses to the point where there were times when i didn't even bother going back to the somnial in between battles because i didn't, didn't feel like i needed to graphically it looks impressive as well and its performance on switch was fantastic i think i noticed like a hitch on maybe one map and i didn't have a single crash intelligence systems showing once again to all the other devs for the switch how to make a game look good and run well on the switch others take note <laughs> I was very concerned going in in regard to the emblem system and it was going to break the game making it too easy or something and make it all challenge meaningless but I'm happy to announce that this isn't the case it seems to be very well balanced around this mechanic and it's a fun addition to the gameplay on the downside though comes the story now I don't want to be too negative as I did enjoy it for what it was but it is very fluffy and light compared to older Fire Emblems, lacking some of that political nuance and such that you think of when you think Fire Emblem. But I feel that stems from just trying to bring in like a little of every previous title as sort of a homage. It kind of didn't lend itself to having a deep political drama <laughs> because you're wanting to bring in little bits of lots of games. And, well... I can't get over how damn creepy some of the character interactions, especially with the poor Divine Dragon are. Before my final thoughts, I always take a quick look at the critic ratings. The critics, in the case of the time of writing this review, were averaging an 81, with a user score of 6.6 .6 or 66. Now, it's not very often I agree with critics over the users, but this is one of those cases, as the user score seems to have been knocked down due to the lack of social elements, and the story a bit and as for me the social side wasn't something i partic cared particularly much about and while i agree the story is a weakness the gameplay more than makes up for it in my opinion my final thoughts are the fire emblem engage is a great new entry in the series overall it's very much focused more on gameplay side as opposed to the story and i'm all for that the story is a weakness and the characters are odd in design and action the tactical depth on offer and the fun to mess around with emblem class and skill systems more than make up for it so my final rating is must play.